Network from Kappa University and pursuing my MP in Information Security and today in this video I am going to show my thesis work based on wireless body area networks. We will start with the PPT. Just hold on. Here we go. Wireless body area network. What is wireless body area network? And my outline of this work is wireless body area network. It's correct the six components communication architecture, three tire communication applications, open research issues, communication standards, the objective of my work, simulation environment, observations, and conclusion. So basically, wireless body area network is nothing but the network of wearable computing devices like Fitbits these days is quite trending. The main characteristics of wireless body area network is the sensors employed in this network should be low power, miniaturized, lightweight and should have long battery life for prolonged monitoring. IEEE 802.15.6 is the latest standardization for wireless body area networks. The sensor devices can be employed inside the body, on the body or in the close vicinity of the human body and they senses biological, physical changes, chemical changes of our body and alarms in case of emergency. Components involved in wireless body area network are the sensors that are used to capture the data. Processor that used to process the data into information. Transceiver is used to collect and transmit the data and battery is used to supply the power. Communication architecture in this, the sensors say affects the information, sends it to the master node through ZigBee, Bluetooth, then the master node sends it to the internet through GSM, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GBRS and then it goes to the data server destination. More clearly, it should be shown in three tire architecture. In first tire, it's the sensor nodes that use to collect the data. Second tire consists of the interconnecting uh, networks like uh, GSM, Bluetooth, Hogera that sends the information. Third tier is the destination where the information is stored. The applications are quite large. It can be involved in medical treatment and diagnosis, entertainment applications, if you are authentication, military and defense also. Open issues are energy consumption should be minimum and a lot of research is going to be done in this field. Security is the main issue. The uh, information we collect in applications using this network technology is quite personal and it should be highly secured. Telecare, quality of service, like reliability should be high, delay should be low and so on. The communication standards involved in the communication of information in this network are IEEE 802.15.4 that specifies the physical and math layer specifications and it operates in three different frequency bands as mentioned here. Then comes IEEE 802.15.6. It is exclusively designed for the standardization of wireless body area networks and the physical layer of this communication standard also operates in three frequency bands. Because of this uh, communication in three different bands it can coexist with other wireless systems also with including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The objective of my research work was to analyze two protocols based on these two standards and to compare their performance on the basis of the total energy consumption latency throughput. So I have used Ubuntu Omelet++ framework that provides libraries for Castalia 3.2 simulator. In my simulation, I have taken care of three different environments. I have put my protocols to different GTS modes and temporal variations. So I have where the supply, power supply to the nodes, and by varying random and scheduled time slots for the packet transmission, we have checked the performance of the protocols. Energy analysis, and we, we can see here that when the GTS mode is on and when there are no temporal variations, Zigbee MAC protocol performs very well and it performs far better than baseline MAC protocol. Even if the, uh, all the conditions are not favorable, then also Zigbee MAC performs better than baseline MAC. The, uh, sorry, in previous slide it was like power supply does not 
look for many changes, but here we can see the remarkable change that energy consumption of baseline MAC has reduced remarkably when the number of scheduled slots for the data transmission increases than the number of random slots. Then coming to the latency, here we can see that Zigbee MAC performs better than the baseline MAC when GTS mode is on and there are no temporal variations. It sends more packets as compared to the baseline MAC protocol. Even by, uh, when we change the power supply to the node, Zigbee MAC still performs better than the baseline MAC protocol. But both the protocols perform best when the power is minus 10 dBm. Then we can say the remarkable change now here when we changes the random time slots and the scheduled time slots for the packet transmission. Now baseline MAC performs better than the Zigbee MAC protocol and not only better but far better than the Zigbee MAC protocol. Then coming to the throughput analysis, we can see here that when GTS mode is on, Zigbee MAC which is pink in color has more packets receive uh, has higher throughput than the baseline map and uh, in no temporal conditions the performance in increases a lot then in scenario 2 we can see that both the protocols again perform best at minus 10 dBm but the throughput of Zigbee Mac is still higher than the baseline map here you can see the change. This is when we change the scheduled time slots and the random assess periods. We can see that the pink bar baseline map performs better than the Zigbee map. Not better, but still there is a uh, now the change is the difference is very low. The performance is same. So we can conclude that when we give the scheduled times a slots assess channels to the baseline MAC protocol, it performs far better than the normal conditions. However, the Zigbee MAC protocol performs when the GTS mode is on and it is subjected to no temporal variations. Thank you. Okay, we are done with this. Thank you.